So Derek, we're here in a new parlour. Could you describe what's here? Yeah, this is a, uh, we're here in Pat McMahon's farm in Castle Island, and uh, he's got a 20 unit Euro 50 stall with a P2100 uh, midi line parlour with uh, a Vanza cluster, a uh, diversion line, milk indicators, uh, two by two electronic pulsation. Uh, he's got 20 unit feeders with a uh, single batch and dribble feed. So he has uh, vacuum operated gates front and rear. Uh, and he has just started milking here about four weeks ago. He was milking in a 12 unit parlour with Duovac and he's now in a 20. He's milking 140 in just about an hour. So Derek, the lead in here, so you've quite a long lead in. We have a long lead in because we've left room here for 24 units if Pat ever wants to expand. And we've also left room if he wants to go auto ID, he can put his readers in here at the back of the parlour. Right, okay, yeah. So is the whole milk line falling forward then? Everything is falling forward. We have a four inch milk line falling forward. Probably, uh, there's probably a fall of about uh, four inches from back to front. Okay, and is it your preference always to fall forward? Always to fall forward. Right, why would you say that? For cow flow, mainly. Yeah. For cow flow, and obviously you need the milk to be going, getting away from the cow as quick as possible. So we try and fall forward. If the receiver's at the front, we're falling forward. If the receiver's at the back, we're falling backwards. Okay, and does your milk line fall at the same level as the concrete? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Which is percentage wise, roughly? Uh, it's, uh, it does a gradient of one and, one and 88 is the gradient from okay. front to back. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, very good. So we'll have a look at some of the technology here. So, yep. So, uh, as we see it here, you've your air gates here anyway. Yeah, you've vacuum operated gates here, operated from the front and the back. The front and the back can be operated from either the front or the back of the pit. Okay. Uh, we have our stainless steel mangers here then and our feeders, which have uh, single point feeding, batch feeding, and dribble feeding. By dribble feeding, I mean it lets down the ration over the duration of the milking time. Uh, when the cow comes in and you hit the batch button, it will start at number one, and it will have about a two second break between each feeder, so the cows are going straight up into their position. Okay, can they do straights and or is there any restrictions? No restriction on those feeders. No, yeah, they can okay. do the whole lot. Right, okay. yeah. And would you commonly provide, say, stainless troughs or do you do galvanise or is your preference stainless? No, always stainless because yeah. they're there for a lifetime. Galvanise with what's in the ration these days, they could be rotten in 10 years. Yeah, they last no, longer. Yeah, they yeah. last a while longer. Okay. And would you normally provide mangers or would you do an, a breast rail with a, a big open trough much? or is Very it rarely because yeah. we tend to, uh, we want to give the farmer more control over his cow. If you have an open, uh, an open truck with feeders like these, which are, you know, they're the high quality feeder, they're there for feed to yield if you want them. You'll have cows fighting and moving and the bully cow will be trying to move up and down. And right, okay. So on. Yeah. So if you look at, say, our, your technology here or the various components, say, what, if you could describe, you have a dump line, have you? We have a dump line, yeah. So you, can, you have a dump line for uh, every cow. You can dump any of the 20 cows, wherever you want, that's going out. It has a separate receiver and milk pump and it's going out over to Pat's calf shed out the front over there. So it, it washes all year round with the machine because from a hygiene point of view, it doesn't take that much water because it's only an inch going out. So we wash it all year round with the parlor. Okay, so your pulsation then? Pulsation what is two. pulsation? We have a uh, Delaval 2x2 two two electronic pulsation. It hasn't changed over the years, except that it's now 24 volt. That's the only, the main difference. And we have one pulsator for every cow. Uh, you have a control valve here for the ACR and you, this is for your pulsation. Okay, and this pipe here? That's your dump line. Okay, yeah. And you have a four inch milk line over there. Okay, fine. Um, so if we go over to the other side there, we'll yep. see maybe your milk indicators. So maybe just ask on your milk indicators, how many people are putting in technology like that now? The majority of farmers are putting in uh, milk indicators like that now because um, I suppose Kerry uh, this year, Kerry, Kerry Agribusiness have given a directive they want farmers to have recording facilities in their parlour, uh, which we can just put a sampler onto that and record. It's a sealed unit, you never touch it, there's ne zero maintenance with it. It's giving you the reading of what the cow is doing in kgs, which is pretty similar to a litre. Okay, it's and is that infrared then? Infrared, yeah. Okay, right. Yeah. So no moving parts? No moving parts, there's no service on that. Right. Okay. Same as the dump line, there's no moving part on that. And the same as the MPC 150, which is this box here for the remover, you never touch it. It's a sealed unit. Right, okay. Yeah. So this box here then? This box here is for controlling our feeding system. Right. 
Yeah, so, so what functionality has that there? I know you described some of it, but okay. Well, we can if you obviously you can batch. You go right, and you're given the cow uh, two kgs. So you're given her two kgs. You batch on the right, and it's going to feed all these cows on the right two kgs. Then if you have a good cow, which you you'll know from your indicators, or you know yourself, and she is if she's giving more milk, you give her more ration. You can single pint in any pint in the dairy uh, in the parlour during milk. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. And they're one hundred percent accurate. They, you know, they, they, they you can feed down to a half a pound. Half a pound, yeah. okay, yeah. And a maximum of what? Uh, well, as it's much as a cow can yeah, eat yeah, <laughs> in true. the milking, so yeah. probably three, four kgs yeah. maximum. Okay. And this device here, is that a diversion for your um, dump no. line? That's the H, what we call a HFC, and that is uh, measuring the milk, and that's operating your cluster remover. When, when, the, okay. when, when the flow drops, right. that's telling your remover that it's time to be taken off. Okay. So the pulsation has dropped off completely and it's just smoothly taken off the cow. Okay. So maybe starting to the start then when you put the clusters on, is it is the is a is the pulsation say lower or is it is it ramping up or what, yeah, what's the process typically? When you lift up the cluster, there's no button to press. You lift up the cluster and pulsation comes on automatically. Right. You put it onto the cow and then it ramps up to full vacuum. Okay. And the same when it's been taken off the cow, there's no stress, there's no odor being pulled or anything like that. When the the the, the vacuum drops down automatically and just smoothly takes it off the cow. Okay. And say as the cow then is coming close to being finished milking? Yes, your light will go orange here when right. the cow is it's green. When uh, the light is green when the cow is milking. Uh, when she's nearly finished milking, she, it, the light goes orange. And that's kind of giving you an indication that she's milked out. Same as she kicked off the, the cluster before the milking, it'll go orange. So. Right. And when, it, when she does kick it off, it's, it's the, the light is alerting you to the yes. fact that she's an early kick off. That's right. And it doesn't drop to the floor or anything like that, does it? it, it it just keeps the light on. It drops to the floor. As well? Yes, yeah, it does. Okay, yeah. She kicks you it off, she kicks it off. You yeah. can miss it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Very and uh, the cluster, could you describe what's here? Yeah, this is a new cluster uh, brought out by Delaval in late 2020. It's been under development for a good few years, I'd say. Um, it's what we call in the vans a cluster. It's got a silicone uh, triangular liner here, which will do 5,000 milkings. It's very simple to change the clusters. I hope it works for me now, but probably not because <laughs> my fingers are so you simply <coughs> pull out the cartridge right yeah and that's how you change your liners you change a set of liners in a couple two minutes okay how much of this are a unique selling point of your, your liner um the fact that it's silicone and it's, it's triangular it does five thousand milkins per per uh, per cartridge whereas generally the people would say the the liner that's out and everybody else's liner is, is two and a half thousand milkings, but this is just five thousand milkings. Okay. The sharp pulse tube, which is here, that does ten thousand milkings. Right. Good. But it's 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 a farmer doesn't need a serviceman to come out and change his liners. He can just buy the liners and change them himself. They, it couldn't be simpler. Okay. Uh, if you have heifers with small quarters, uh, they're a brilliant cluster. They, they just cling on. Like, Right. You know, yeah. just Don't lose vacuum much. No, no. Yeah. No, no. And they've got a flow rate of about thirteen and a half liters a minute. So. Okay. Whereas your standard older cluster had a flow rate of about six liters. Yeah. yeah. So when you're starting milking, then it, it's on a weight sensor, is it? It's it's, yeah, it's releasing it's, the vacuum. It's hanging up here. Yeah. Basically hanging here like this. We'll see that during milking. And it's hanging there like that. So if I'm going to milk this cow here, I simply grab the, grab the cluster like that. It's hanging there. Okay. I lift it up. Pulsation starts. I'm straight, straight onto my cow. Okay. Yeah, and also here the vacuum is cut off. In the vacuum position. is cut off if, if yeah, a heifer or a cow happens to kick one off or even two off, the cluster will stay on the other two. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. And say so your wash line then as you're putting on those clusters there. Yeah, when you're, when you're finished your last row of cows, it's very easy. Just pull out this. If you have it designed in such a way that this is your last row of cows, this side, you simply take off the clusters are hanging there. You drop the vacuum down and put them onto the wash line. And give them a wash and, and the machine is ready for washing it speeds up everything okay and say prior to milking then will the all the acrs or the cup removers pull out pull all your clusters up or uh, they will but we don't advise it yeah why? we advise because it distorts the liners over time it's not good for them in terms of the drag of it y yeah okay so ideally best practice is to come down and pull them off right. drop them down like that put in your wash line and they lift up themselves then. okay yeah sure. so when using the dump line here could you just show yeah, if you've got a cow, say this is unit number two. So if you're going to go to the dump line, two switches down, she's into the, you're going to the dump line right. straight away. Yeah. Um, you can make the mistake 
of not putting it back up and dumping good milk, but it's better that way than the other way. Yeah. So you're back onto normal milk then, you're back up and you're going to the milk line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, matting then, do you like, is, is it common that people would use matting now? It has become milk? very common in the last couple of years, yeah. uh, especially in the last two years. Uh, I suppose, depending on the size of the parlour, some people are milking you know, 120 or 30 cows inside in a 10 or a 12 unit parlour that could be milking six hours a day. Mats make a huge difference to them. Yes. You know, yeah. They're not as tired. And yeah. uh, people that have mats just wouldn't do without them. Okay. Yeah. And say something then in terms of the height of, of the, the cow standing area relative to the pit floor, there's a lot of people have different opinions on it. Have you? Yeah, I, I, my opinion preference? is that, uh, you know, if you can get a, a good builder, like the builder here did an excellent job, if you can try and camber the middle of the floor towards the pit edge, you don't realise it, but your toes are below, your, you're, you're pointing in, but you don't really feel it. So you're in a better milking position. I would be advising farmers to go anywhere from 34 to 36 inches right. from where the cow is. You need to be putting on the clusters like that. Okay. So you're not bending down. Yeah. You're not going to be uh, yeah. anywhere from 34 to 36 inches. Okay. And the weight of the pit? In a two foot six building like this, the building is 18 foot four wide. Right. <coughs> so we have six foot one where the cow is standing, both sides. Yeah. And that's that's the most important measurement in the parlour. Okay. Because you need <coughs> everything. You might have small cows, big co cows, but that's a happy medium. So, you know, you have seventy three inches from the wall to the pit edge. Okay. And that covers an awful lot of uh, okay. weeds. Okay. And say if you're, you know, a high input system, a lot of maybe indoor feed and stuff like that, Holsteins. Yeah. versus a grass-based system like that, would you change the weight to reflect the farmer's situation or I not? I would possibly change it one inch, not anymore. Yeah. Not anymore. Okay. Because there's nothing worse than coming in. Cows are able to turn and move. And yeah. You know, but it's a lot of heavy metal in the stall. <coughs> it's a seriously heavy stall. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to go anywhere. Yeah. No. No, no. You could milk elephants inside this. Yeah. It's yeah. Built to last. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's made by Delaval themselves. Okay. It comes from Poland. Very good. So drafting wise then? If we're on a standalone parlour, we don't have standalone, so we, we use this, the, the alpha drafting system, okay. which is an excellent system. Yeah. Um, any heat detection can be fitted to it. Right, uh, it will, will communicate with it. Yeah, it right. will communicate. It has uh, the app for the field. If you go out in the field and you're picking out your cows, it downloads automatically when you come back in. It's like, there's going to be a lot more drafting systems sold because in one man operations when you're yeah. trying to sort cows in yeah. the first week in May and you're yeah and that, that time is coming on us now yeah with, with so it, it saves a pile of work even for you know going to the mart anything at all it, it saves a pile of work yes yeah I just see in your milk line here uh, you've a lot of joints stainless joints everything no is stainless. plastic joints everything is stainless right. yeah yeah we don't do any plastic joints or rubber joints it's all stainless steel yeah 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 long term better bet yeah it just doesn't budge it doesn't there's no wear yeah yeah but everything is stainless steel yeah this here then is that a, a drain yeah everything drains down here when when the parlors finish washing and um, both inside in the dairy and out here everything drains down automatically so you have no issues with frost if you thought you were going to have very heavy frost like you're not going to have a major loop here anyway you could take off your clusters and just leave them hanging like this okay but if you thought you were going to get very heavy frost like we got in 2009 or 10 yeah but other than that there's nothing to freeze because there's no water left inside the machine right okay Teat spray then, I see you have a dropper, how many, uh, how many units? Yeah, we try to keep it one to every three to four units, so the teat sprayer doesn't get uh, pulled around too much. Okay. Yeah. So. <coughs> and some people go for a long hose in for washing, I see you've, you've, you've wa wash, wash a dropper or something. Yeah, whatever. we put in uh, Pat's wash down system, on, that's on a, it's three phase, it's pumped pretty strong, but as you can see, it's too strong for washing cows. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he put in his own system, which is like a pressurized as well, yeah. but not, not as strong, you know, it's just yeah. for washing the cow. It's a key requirement, I would say, in a large parlor like this, having plenty of water at yeah. your disposal. You wash quick. A lot, of wash, a lot of water washing down. But I mean, what we're doing is, is we're circulating the water through the plate cooler and into the IBCs up here. So okay. it's relatively warm water that's washing down. Okay. So he's not wasting any, any major water, he's, it's been used twice. Yeah, and there's lots of light in the parlour I see as well here. Light is fierce and important for cows coming in. Yeah. Like m most of the year here, there'll be no, no lights on, there's no need. Yeah. But your, your, say your halogen <coughs> here, your lights. Yep. They're LED lights. Yeah. They're like the old fluorescents, but they're actually LEDs. And uh, again, you need them down in the pit. 
it's not good to have them hanging up high because if you have a breeze coming through the parlor, it's throwing shadows. Okay. So have them down here, pits lit up, you see what you want to see. And you have one per bale or one per, say, Yeah, I try to, I advise standard. farmers to put one between every truss. Okay. Because yeah. uh, it's, they're not expensive and, and yeah. they make a huge difference. Yeah. And cheap to run now? Yeah, they're very cheap to yeah. run. Yeah. Down, down here then we have a 120 litre receiver for your four inch milk line. You have a variable speed vacuum pump, or, or milk pump, sorry. Uh, it's called a smooth operator, so it's, it's running continuously, uh, but it's, it's, it's varying up and down the speed, which gives you uh, very good cooling. Uh, and uh, there's no problem with flooding, there's no problem with froth, anything like that, and it, but it's, it's excellent for cooling. And over here is the receiver for the dump line, which is kind of only used in the springtime anyway. Okay, so is this a three phase or single <coughs> phase? This plant? is a three phase installation. Okay, so if a farmer had a single phase installation, can you do variable speed? We can still put in a smooth operator, yes. Right. Yes. It comes How? Uh, Delaval has produced one that, that uh, is a single phase, but it uh, it's works as a variable speed with milk pump. Oh, okay, yeah. very good. With an inverter. Yeah. And are farmers obliged to have variable speed, say milk pumps at the moment? So uh, from January of this year, if you're getting a grant, uh, everything has to be variable speed. Okay. So these two switches here, what? <coughs> they are your gates. Right. Front and rear, so that's the back gate. Open the back gate and close. This is the front gate, same this side, and you have the same below then. Okay. You have the, the equivalent of that behind. Yeah. Okay. Just in terms of the vacuum, Derek, on it, is there one or two? You one or two, one vacuum pump on a, it will do up to 20, 20 units. It's a DVP 2700. Uh, which works, it's practically silent. You'll hear it if you're here for milking. There is no noise off it. It's, it's very good. You could stand in here and make a phone call. Okay. Yeah, so she's good. variable speed again? She's variable speed. Yeah. yeah. So when is the peak demand for vacuum? Peak demand va is for when you're washing. Right. Yeah. Okay. So there's a gauge here on the wall. When the cows, if you come in here during milking, this will tell you that it's probably, new, well, it will be working only at about 25% of what it's capable of. Right. When you're washing, uh, the percentage rate goes up to about 60%. Yeah, very good. Yeah, there's an hour. So it's been double cooled there. And back out across here and down. <coughs> and when you are uh, in the wash position, this is your position. When you're in milk position, you simply take this off and screw it onto the tank. You open the valve, I won't open it now, but uh, you're ready to go milking. Right. You can, when you're in milk position, you simply take this off and screw it onto the tank. You open the valve, I won't open it now, but uh, you're ready to go milking. Right. You cannot wash unless this switch is up and you cannot milk unless this switch is in that position. Okay. So you can't make a mistake. Okay. And there's days when that's important, I presume. Well, if you Maybe. had a relief milker in here or something like that, and he goes, the machine will turn on yeah. and it will run, but you won't have any vacuum. And you'll say, oh, I got to put the uh, outlet onto the tank. Okay, yeah. So and your non-return valve <coughs> is in there. Non-return well. valve is here then, in yeah. the bottom. Again, when you're washing your back up, you're finished milking. You have uh, pressed your air purge button, which is down in the pit. Yeah. It drives all the milk out through this line. Yes. And out into the bottom of the tank. So when you take this off, There's going to be a disappointed cat or a dog because there's nothing yeah. there. Yes. And you're straight back on for wash. Yeah, understood. Yeah. So then this is the tank. Yeah. Auto washer for the parlor. Yeah. Dog so there. tell us about the auto washer. What functionality is that? Yeah, that's a Delaval Hygienist. So in the morning, this you're controlling, turning on and off the machine from here as well. Everything is done from here. So if you want to turn on the machine, you just press milking button here. Right. And the machine turns on, you're ready to go milking. Same when you want to turn it off. <coughs> Excuse me. When you want to go washing, um, you've all your little jobs done, your connection's done. You come down, you've taken out your filter sock and maybe put in, best practice is to put in another filter sock when you're, when you're washing. And Why? Why would you say that, say? To, to make sure there's no residue left in any of the lines. Right. Yeah. It's best practice. It's not done very often, like, but yeah. it is best practice yeah. to do that. Yeah. Uh, so you simply press the wash button. In the morning, we try to tell the farmer because obviously the cows usually have more milk in the morning that we do a hot wash every morning. And a simple, a simple uh, single rinse in the evening then. Okay. Just a cold rinse. Yes. Yeah. And if they do that, they shouldn't have any problems with TBCs or thermogenic. Say in terms of the, you know, obviously it's a busy time for 
new parlor installations and stuff mm. like that. So how many people would put an auto wash in typically? What percentage? Um, typically 80%. Right. They would, anybody that's buying it, because there is a specifically uh, a grant for an auto washer outside okay. of the units in the parlor. Okay. Like there's an auto washer, there's a, a grant for the plate cooler, there's yeah. a grant for the auto washer, there's yeah. a grant for the tank, there's a grant for the units. So most guys will put in a washer. Yeah. Well, it makes life a lot easier. Yeah, and it's probably doing it consistently, obviously. It's a consistent wash, and like some people will be trying to tell you that uh, you use a lot more detergent and stuff with a, an auto washer, you actually don't. Right. Yeah, it's, it's much, you actually probably use less. Yeah, yeah. very it's, good. It's all automatic dosing. There, from a safety point of view, there is no handling detergents. It's all pumped automatically. Okay. So just maybe as an example to people that this is a new installation, so mm -hmm. once the construction is done and uh, you have say free reign to do what you want in here how, how long to put in a say 20 unit machine like this how typically? long to put in a 20 unit uh, it's typically three days for a 20 pint installation once you can stay at it and, and, and you know get, get up and going then you're depending on plumbers and electricians and maybe waiting for the ESP to connect up something like that yes. we'll, we'll be ready to rock in three days pretty okay much, yeah. good yeah that's a busy site then Derek we're looking at the, the meal bin do you yeah. supply them all our meal mills are uh, supplied by Crowley's in Cork so as soon as we have the installation in there on afterwards, uh, installing the augers and installing the bin to whatever spec bin the farmer likes. That's a 16 ton bin as far as I know. Yeah. So um, Crowley's have a big history in meal bins. Yeah, we, they provide a good service. If there's an issue, you can give them a call and, and, and they sort it out. Yeah. yeah. So um, in terms of, say, the Slattery's business there, could you describe what you do and where you're based and yeah, how far you're Yeah, we're based in uh, Tralee, in the town of Tralee. Uh, we cover all of Kerry. Um, we, uh, it's a big area. Uh, we have that's a, a shop van, and we have uh, we have eleven vans on the road uh, between servicemen installing. We also probably unique that uh, we do tanks as well as a Delavan dealer. I think we're the only dealer in the country that supply and fit tanks and look after tanks as well as milking machines. Okay. And Kerry's fair to say has a long history of dairy production. A lot of cows in Kerry. A lot of cows in Kerry. Yeah. A lot of cows in Kerry. Yeah. So no, and yeah. a big a big county to service as well. Yeah, I think we have about a, it's a big county to service. Like you could be, it's not like going five miles down the road. You could have to go 40 miles down the road and uh, with robots and, and, and rotaries. And we supply a service 365, 24 seven. Very good. Yeah. How many staff employed? We have 18 staff. Okay, very yeah, good. Yeah. And. Am I right in saying you assemble a lot of your machines in house before yeah. they come on site? Yeah, we have a, uh, a couple of guys inside that uh, every machine is assembled in, in house and tested before it leaves to go to farm because uh, it's not possible to get through the volume of machines we do uh, otherwise. Uh, so we could we try and knock uh, in the short season that we have uh, from we'll say the 1st of December until the 1st of March, we'll be trying to punch out uh, two to three machines a week. Yeah, yeah, a real peak season and a lot of pressure yeah. on workways. Well, we try and get the guys that uh, are going into an existing building where there was an existing parlour, we have to give them priority, get them done first. The greenfield site man gets pushed back the list, but he's happy with that too because most farmers are quite understanding of one another's problems. Okay, so when it comes to rotaries, where are they coming from Sweden or are they coming from New Zealand a lot of that equipment? Uh, most, well, Delaval have it's all central the, the equipment they have factories all over the world but uh, they have a central dis distribution place in a place called Gallen in Germany and so everything comes from there right everything comes from there so okay we're we have we're installing two rotaries at the moment now okay and do you do that yourselves do you cover all that installation yourselves yes, yes. we don't put on the t we don't do the, the the table or the concrete that's right. done by a different company and uh, we come along and install the milking machine afterwards okay Very and good. we silos which are milk silos outdoor silos they're becoming very popular now as well. Okay, yeah, yeah very good. No, yeah. thank you for your time, Derek, anyway. It's a pleasure Thanks to see your work. Thanks a million. Okay, thank you. Cheers.